NBC's chief foreign correspondent Richard Engel has just written a barn burner of a book. Uh, it's about his exploits moving to Cairo without so much as speaking the language when he was straight out of college. Uh, his exploits in Egypt with the Muslim Brotherhood, which apparently loved him, perhaps because they didn't know about his secret whiskey and high dollar blackjack habit at the time. It covers some very serious stuff, including his time as a war correspondent in multiple theaters of war. It covers his kidnapping in Syria, describes the way Saddam Hussein looked at him in Baghdad and the way it made him want to back up a few steps. It's a 20-year look at his time in the Middle East before and after 9-11, before and after the disastrous Iraq war. His life as an American correspondent who mostly lives in the Middle East as the whole Middle East has been blowing up. It's a look through Richard's eyes at what he calls a volatile and religious region of rich governments and poor people. It's a really good book. It's really good. It's short, it goes really fast, it's written really well, and it's great. And Richard's book comes out just as the intelligence agencies are warning that ISIS is determined to strike in the United States, just as they warned the exact same thing about Al-Qaeda right before 9-11. And it comes out literally tonight as we are getting late word that for the first time since the civil war started in Syria in 2011, there is an agreement tonight for the first time for a cessation of hostilities, a mini ceasefire. Well, what does that mean? There's nobody I would rather ask than my friend Richard Engel. Joining us now is NBC News Chief Foreign Correspondent Richard Engel, author of Then All Hell Broke Loose, <laughs> Two Decades in the Middle East. Richard, it's great to see you. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. It's so good to be here, and thank you for having me on. Yeah. It's, You're, you know, it's it, always fun to be here and talking about this new book. It's, it's sickening because, obviously, you're good at your job of being a foreign correspondent, and you're a good guy, but you're a really good writer. It's really annoying. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a really good... Read. Um, oh, it's just, I, I hope you enjoyed writing it as much as I enjoyed reading it. It's really good. The, the hardest part was coming up with the thesis. Uh, what is the principle? Okay, so it's been 20 years in the Middle East. I've watched a lot of things come and a lot of happy moments and a lot of sad moments. So how do you digest that down into a thesis? A thesis, yeah. And, and eventually I thought, okay, I got a model. I have an idea. I have a way of digesting what I've seen and sort of maybe guessing at what's to come. And then the rest was filling in all the color and all the people that I've met and all the, 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 the proof of why I think uh, well, what I What you I, show what is how you learned it, how you came to learn and, and understand and hold this thesis of what's happened in the Middle East and America's role in it over two administrations. But we see it happen through your eyes as you learn it by living it, um, which is really useful. Um, I feel like this is actually sort of prescriptive in terms of the United States and the Middle East. You're not saying anything's easy, but you are very directly describing what we've done wrong. Well, I, the, the basic premise is that there was a status quo, and the status quo existed for decades. And the status quo wasn't great. The Middle East muddled along, and it was corrupt, and the leaders were brutal, and there was a lot of internal anguish, conflicts that were below the surface, Sunni Shia, Arab, Persian, Turkish, Kurd, but they were all kind of held in place, locked in place. And through eight years of military action by the Bush administration, we broke that status quo. Mm -hmm. And then through almost eight years of really inconsistent action from the Obama administration, that status quo was destroyed and all those pent up issues became unleashed. Mm -hmm. And we're living in that, that chaos. And the chaos is really represented by ISIS. And I think it is very chilling just to hear senior intelligence officials say that ISIS is coming to attack the U.S. If you remember, when ISIS first came out, the same intelligence briefings were that, oh, ISIS is just a local group. It doesn't have international ambitions. Right. That's never been that's the true. case, by the way. Um, ISIS has always had international ambitions. So. Uh, the, the, the concept is we had a status quo through 16 years of what misguided direct action and then misguided sometimes inaction or certainly inconsistent action. We're living in this, this horrible period and we have to think about what's going to come next. And I think what's going to come next is a series of, of strongmen, a series of dictators. I think we're going to return to a, a new status quo.
and I think we're, we're already starting to see that. Emerge. A second generation ISIS, that ISIS is going to die out. ISIS is not going to live forever. It doesn't have a winning strategy. But it may do some horrible, horrible atrocities in this country, and, and it already has in other countries, before it does. The book is called And Then All Hell Broke Loose, Two Decades in the Middle East, uh, just out from NBC's chief foreign correspondent, Richard Engel. Richard, again, congratulations. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Really, really glad you're here. All right, we'll be right back. Stay with us. Hey, YouTube fans, I'm Luke Russert. Thanks for checking out our MSNBC channel. Subscribe by clicking right here and click any of the videos over here to watch the latest breaking news, mini documentaries, conversations from Shift, and other digital exclusives. Check it out.